purchase us with his blood and then he has that mercy to present us blameless unto the father someday perfect just imagine the grace of god the mercy of god that we will be presented hindi ka ba kilabutan na perfect in front of the father as blameless po na walang sala na alam mo naman marami tayong sala ano po so that's why uh, because of that we should extend compassion as well because extend mercy and grace uh, of course all, everything is in the context of that uh, as long as we are doing because uh, things because of the love of God kahit na yung magkaroon ka pa ng uh, sabi natin frustration or anger towards people who are uh, purposely uh, misleading the people of God it still should be something that the Lord does yung talagang uh, hindi lang yung uh, yung sinabi nga pa na be angry and sin not in the context of because you're jealous for the truth of the word of God because you're jealous for the glory of God that's why you're gonna have that emotion but not having anger for the sake of being angry itself so that's when we go uh, fall into so much trouble po. so I just realized that uh, this morning para bang uh, you know kahit na ano pa kahit na gaano pa po natin tingin natin sa sarili natin na I know a lot of, about the Bible kahit na yung mga scholar Bible scholars pa you really cannot exhaust the word of God and there's still so much to learn and the Lord is giving us fresh outlook every day as we study the word of God as we read as we meditate as we obey uh, the word of God po that's why it's such a blessing even the the uh, the messages of the song po um, this one here in Joshua chapter 6 I had a different uh, outline in mind uh, nung because I already read this so before even preparing it meron na po akong idea kung how, how, how I wanted to preach this but when I was typing this yesterday I was uh, led into a completely different direction uh, here in this chapter um, it was a blessing po sa akin I hope it will be a blessing to you as well so I would like to ask uh, for, you, uh, to, for you guys to stand and let's read uh, chapter 6 of Joshua which is not a long chapter and uh, let's read this responsibly po. Let me just find it. Okay. Joshua chapter 6. The Bible says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And you shall... Uh, compass the city all ye men of war and go around about the city once thus shalt thou do six days and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And the armed men went before the priest that blew the, with the trumpets, and the, and the real reward came after the ark, the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets, and the armed men went before uh, them. But the reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to 
And the city shall be accursed, even it, that all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are within her house, uh, with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. They utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent out to spy out Jericho. Joshua adjured them at the time, saying, Curse be the man. Altogether, please. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Let us uh, uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, we, pr we pray, Lord, that uh, you bless this message uh, this afternoon. I pray, Lord, that as we go through this chapter, we see uh, the similarities we have uh, with the people of Israel, how you dealt with them. And how you're dealing with us uh, even today, dear Lord, uh, even in this uh, great story of the victory that you have given uh, your people over uh, the city of Jericho. I pray, Lord, that uh, we, you show us also today, Lord, that the, the victories that you have given them, are you're also ready to give it to us, dear Lord. We just have to uh, surrender to your will, surrender to what you want. I mean, I pray, Lord, that you help me as I... Uh, preach, help me, dear Lord, as I uh, expound on these verses, and may you alone be glorified po sa aming kalagitan. Dalangin sa pahan, Jesus. Amen. Ano ba ito? May nag- may nag-chat eh. Kinokorek yung pronunciation ko po. Ayan ba? Mamaya na lang. Eh. Review ko po. Okay, so um, here in Joshua chapter 6, the title of our message today is The Battle is Won. The Battle is Won. Or we, we might say that the battle has already been won. Pinanalo na po ng Panginoon ang, uh, ang uh, laban. And here, uh, there are many preachings that I have heard dito po sa, uh, here in this chapter. And I'm sure that you have heard a lot of preachings as well. And there are many. Uh, and as I was originally planning on looking at uh, God's command for Isra to Israel to, you know, this very weird command for them to go around the city for six days, seven day, seven day go around seven times because people have tried to explain the logic behind this. And as I was looking, I was trying to read, I was trying to go to very many sources, I was trying to think and pray, really can't explain why. And, and then I just came to the conclusion that I don't have to explain because uh, Joshua didn't explain. God didn't ask, uh, tell uh, Joshua to write the explanation for that. And we ha I don't think we have uh, any, uh, any command uh, sa Panginoon or business trying to understand that. Maybe it's meant not to be understood. 
Uh, pagdating po natin sa langit, tanungin na natin ng Panginoon. Panginoon, ano ba yung pinagawa mo sa kanila? Ba't palibot-libot po sila lang ganun? But uh, looking at this, what I saw were uh, similarities between um, Israel and, and, and us today. Uh, I'm not saying that we are Israel today. Two weeks ago or last week, I heard, I was listening to a certain conference uh, and, and listening to this one uh, very, very famous preacher in the Philippines. He read Ephesians chapter 2 and his explanation there was that Israel today does not exist anymore. No, the, the Israel of God does not exist anymore. But we are Israel. Kasi sabi dito that we are uh, uh, members of the commonwealth of Israel. Na nung naligtas ka, uh, Israelite ka na. Yun ang sinabi. So tayo na yung Israelite. And those are some of the things that has burdened me as well. That's why ginag, nag, online, nag, live din po ako every day because I know there are many pastors who are doing that and, and they are such a blessing po. And at least para po hindi yung napapakinggan yung mga ganon. And sabi mo, pwede natin sabihin, ano bang big deal na turin, turin natin sa rinan natin na Israel today? Marami pong magiging komplikasyon po sa doktrina at interpretation po ng Bible when you think that you're Israel. Ano po? So, uh, it is not it. So, uh, kaya po nung binasa ko ulit, um, nakita ko po dito, even in the uh, very first verses, we are going to focus there and then we're going to quickly finish from the uh, half hanggang matapos po. So, going at verse number, uh, starting at verse number one, sabi dito, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So, hindi po ibig sabihin na shut up na sila, tahimik, ano po, sabihin, uh, sila po yung nakakulong na, nagkulong na sila. Uh, and we all know why. Alam po natin, even if you will place yourself in the uh, uh, the, uh, the shoes of these people, you're also going to hide. Why? Because this, uh, this itong mga tao, these Israelite people who you have heard of, remember in uh, Rahab said to the, the spies that we have heard about you, we have heard what uh, you did to the other uh, um, nations, we have heard what God is doing through you, and all of us, not only Rahab, not only her household, but all of them are already shaking in their uh, uh, in their boots, and they're already afraid. They're 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 so afraid that um, their the judgment is going to be upon them. So because of that, and upon seeing na nakita po nila na uh, uh, they were able to cross the, the last obstacle bago po umabot sa kanila which is the Jordan River when they saw that they know na uh, eto na parating na we're, it's going to be the end of us it's going to be our death Israel is going to annihilate us and we're going to lose everything this very day this very moment that's why these people siguro pagka lagpas ng uh, lagpas ng Israel once they have crossed the river they have run towards Jericho not only the, the people of uh, specifically of Jericho I'm sure that people around uh, that place also hid with them talagang pasok din sila tago rin sila at saka nila sinara and, and, and one thing I can I can see here is that you know even heathen are afraid of God when they're face of judgment you know, yung mga tao, there are people today who, have, who are still strong, young, and uh, knowledgeable, and rich, and they have all of these things. They, they have all the courage in the world to say, I don't believe in God. They have all the courage in the world to say, uh, I don't need God. Uh, we don't need a higher being. Uh, we can take care of ourselves. All of this, we, 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 all this and that. We don't have to believe in some fairy tale, someone dying on the cross to save me from my sin. I don't have to believe in that. Why? Because I'm my own person. I am my own God. So these people, they have that uh, uh, courage. But I'm sure that when they are faced with judgment, when they will be faced even near death situations, magkakaroon din po sila ng takot sa puso. They will also fear. Kasi even though however courageous you are in saying that I don't believe in God, however courageous you are in saying that I don't need God, when you are almost dying, when you're there on your deathbed, you're going to think about it. Because you're going to think, what if it's true? Diba? Uh, we've heard about that argument uh, many, many times. Uh, uh, what if there's a God someday uh, th then those who live their lives uh, without a God, sila yung lugi kasi they will be faced with judgment. But those, uh, but those of us who believe in God, even if uh, somehow, although it's a bad argument, even though somehow wala pa lang just in the end, at least safe pa din. 
Di ba yun ang sinasabi nila? But uh, uh, knowing the fact, knowing full well that there is a God who will someday judge us, however courageously they say today that they don't believe in God, someday when they're face to face with God, they're going to tremble. And these are these people. And, and they have heard about Israel for many, many years. They've heard about this God of Israel for many years. They, again and again, they have refused to repent towards Him. And again and again, they have refused to change their wicked ways. Now they are faced with the judgment of God. Now they are afraid. Tago na po sila. They are now, they ran towards Jericho. And now they have fortified themselves inside that. Hoping that these walls are going to be uh, the one thing that will keep themselves from being, uh, uh, from experiencing the judgment of God. And, and remember the last chapter in chapter 5 when Israel took uh, a few extra days to, to be circumcised. I'm sure that they, they took those uh, extra days in order to fortify their defenses. But, in, but despite the preparation, despite fortifying their defenses, despite going in, inside Jericho in order to protect themselves. Ano sabi ng Panginoon sa verse 2? And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of Valor. That's why I, I entitled uh, the message, The Battle is One. Because it's only the Lord who can claim something like this. Sa atin po mga nagtuturo, this is in the present perfect form. If I am wrong, please correct me later. Sabi po dito, see, I have given. It means that uh, tapos na. The, the, the action has already been done. Though no battle has been fought yet. Though they haven't even touched the wall of Jericho. Though they haven't even stepped foot inside the city of Jericho. The Lord is already telling Joshua, it's finished. Tapos na. Binigay ko na sayo ang, ang, ang lugar na ito. Even the mighty men of valor, valor, all of these people, I have given to you already. Only God can say that. It's only our God who can claim that kind of thing. Wala po sa atin who is mighty enough, who is knowledgeable enough, who is sovereign to, to make this kind of claims. And yet God told Joshua, whatever happens from now, I have given you the land, uh, the, the, this, this city, and even the land of Canaan. And thinking about it, God has already told this to his people many, many times. Even, even to the previous generation that didn't trust him, he already said that I have given you that land. You're already victorious. I have given it to you. Say in your nayan. You only have to go and to claim it. You only have to go and to possess the land. But this time, uh, this generation, this time they are ready to obey the Lord. So that moment that God has chosen Israel to be His nation, when when God talked to Abraham, pinangako na niya po yan. He already promised them that. Nag-iisa pa lang. Wala pa. The, the, the father of the twelve tribes are not there yet. Hindi pa nag-aasawa si Isaac. Hindi pa, nag hindi pa uh, uh, nangyayari yung mga nangyayari kay Jacob. But God had already told Abraham, I'm going to give you and your seed a land. I'm going to give that to you. And now, they're going to see that promise happen right in front of their eyes. It's, they're going to see that. But we see that even though they have the claim to victory, marami po naging bumps and bruises along the way. There are many problems along the way. And it shows in a 40 years of wandering around the wilderness. That is the result of all of those uh, uh, disobedience and everything. And, and we have already studied about that. We've already seen that. But what I, what I want us to see is park in this verse. And then later on, we'll go quickly towards the end. But I want us to look at some similarities again. Between, uh, uh, between them and us between how God dealt with Israel and how God is dealing with us and how God treated them and how God is treating us today first point I want to make here is that we are God's people as well if, if, just like Israel are people that God has chosen we are also God's people specifically today we are God's children the Bible says in John 1 12 but as many as receive him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name though ultimately lahat po na, everything in this world belongs to God we know that but we are to, uh, we twice belong to God because when we got uh, uh, lost in sin when 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 we were under the bondage of sin when we were when we the time that we belong to the devil Christ has died for us redeemed us and when we came to him in repentance and faith we belong to him we are his children kaya sa ngalan po dalawa lang pong klase ng tao meron ngayon God's children and the devil's children. John 8, 44 says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the last of your father ye will do. So just like Israel, tayo po sa panahon ngayon, we are God's people. Tayo po ay mga tao ng Panginoon. Tayo po ay mga anak ng Diyos. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Let's start 
reading, let me just uh, open it here. The Bible says, And you have the quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we also had our conversations in time past. So, anila, uh, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That is our that was our situation before. We were the children of wrath. We were living this life according to our own lust. We were living this life just to uh, just to fulfill what we want. And the Bible even says in verse two that we were the children of what disobedience. All we can do is disobey God. All we uh, all we were doing was commit. Uh, was to live in sin. But number f- verse number 4 says, But God, who is what? Rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace, uh, uh, by, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His, in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So, if comparing our, uh, just like Israel, they were under the bondage of, uh, of Egypt before, they were there, uh, um, and, and uh, they were really living in, in a very mediocre life, not below mediocre life. God has also redeemed us and saved us and has now uh, uh, made us his, uh, his children, and has now made us his, made us his people. Now, when God created man, again, sin has corrupted our relationship with God. But praise God, through His grace, mercy, and kindness, He has redeemed us through, through His blood. And now we are the people of God. Now we are the children of God, just like Israel. And just like Israel, God has freed us from slavery. Uh, God freed Israel from Egypt, from, from the bondage of, of Egypt. Uh, we know in the Bible that whenever we talk about Egypt, it talks about the world, it talks about that. And we were also, also like that. The basa po natin kanina sa Ephesians chapter 2, that we were under that power, where we were children of wrath. People who only obey what our uh, father wants is just to lie and to lie and to lie. Ganun po tayo dati. That's why, as I've, as I've made a point in this aking de- uh, everyday devotion, that we are never more like the devil than, we, th- than the time that we don't tell the truth. Why? Because he's the father of lies. And, and people who lie are, are, are his children. Kaya nga, but, sabi po dito sa Romans chapter 6 verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. This is talking about, uh, uh, this is what baptism symbolizes. We are, we are buried together in Christ, and now we are going to be uh, 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 right, raised again, or uh, no, Inangat, para po, uh, in the likeness of his resurrection. That means we now walk in the newness of life. That means today we live by a new principle, which is verse 6. Sabe, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That is our flesh. Okay, that is our sinful nature. That the body of sin might be destroyed, and that henceforth we should not serve sin. So now, because before we are under the bondage of sin, now that we are saved, now that we are the children of God, He has now given us a new principle, principle by, by which we should live by. We don't have to live in sin anymore. Just like Israel. Binigyan po sila, God has been so good to Israel that He has uh, um, uh, saved them from that bondage. We know what, what, what uh, they have been doing in Egypt. They were not living uh, uh, lives na para sila mga hari. No, they were slaves over there. They were uh, people who were doing the dirty work of Egypt. They were the ones uh, doing all of these uh, great uh, creations dun sa lugar na yun. The reason why Egypt was so great during that time is because they are slaves. Uh, they, so, they have so many slaves. But God took His people from there and then freed them from that slavery. And that's exactly what Christ did for us as well. He has freed us from the power of sin. That means we don't have to live in sin anymore. It means we have now the power to say no to slavery. That means now we have the power uh, to say uh, to say no to sin. Sabi dito that the uh, body of sin might be what might be destroyed. Destroyed meaning na parang uh, uh, wala nang effect. Wala it will be paralyzed. But just like Israel, we sometimes want to go back to Egypt then. And these are the similarities of Israel and us. Not only were we freed from that slavery, but we sometimes want to go back. 
Remember when they were complaining, saying, mas maganda pa yung buhay namin, masarap pa yung pagkain sa Egypt, at least doon, masarap yung pagkain. Dito, gugutumin lang kami para mamatay. And then, when that happens, gagaling pa sa bibig nila na, mas mabuti pa doon, mas mabuti pang bumalik na lang doon. You know, sometimes yan din po tayo. You know, even though God has already destroyed that body of sin and, and crucified it and told us that we don't have to live in sin anymore, sometimes we want to go back and revive that body. Sometimes we, we want to go back and say, uh, mas maganda pa yung buhay ko dati, walang sinusunod. Kaya, that's why you, you noticed the preachings this morning of Preacher Gomer and Preacher Alex, when they were describing the scoffers, Preacher Gomer uh, uh, described that, and Preacher Alex described uh, uh, the, those who do not want to believe in God, isa yung kanilang karakteristik na similar. Sabi nila, these people who live according to their lust. Why? Because the reason why they don't want to believe, I don't know if it's the cause or if it is uh, the result of not believing in God, but it ultimately uh, goes into, uh, uh, results into something like this. I don't want to obey someone higher than me. Gusto ko sunday sarili ko. Yun lang. You know, the reason why we, we, we miss that kind of life is maybe because we're so tired of obeying rules. We're so tired of pleasing God. We're so tired of, of living our lives for someone else when we are, uh, na, na tayo naman mismo yung nagsasuffer dito sa mundo. And that's why we say na, mabuti pa yung mga unbeliever. You know, those unbelievers, they can do what they want. They can go wherever they want. They can eat what they want. They can drink what they want. Uh, every Sunday, they can just, just go daling daling instead of going to the church and being sleepy and wasting your weekend without having fun. And then you have to go to work again. You know, I don't know if you find yourself sometimes thinking about that. Uh, that you're missing that old life, just like Israel. But, 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 uh, but the reason why we do that is because the reason why we envy those, uh, 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 those unbelievers, the reason why we try to go back into the kind of life is because we think that the life that God has given us now is not satisfying. Why? Because we're not trying to get our satisfaction from God. Kaya nga po, yung Israel, they're not contented with manna. They're not contented with the, the, life, that, the, the life that God has given them. That's why uh, uh, whenever faced with trouble, whenever faced with uh, near-death situations, their mind automatically goes back to Egypt. Ganyan, are we like that also? Whenever we have problems, whenever we have trials, our mind automatically goes back to our old life. Goes back to our, our, uh, the time that we were still uh, free and, and not thinking about anything else. You know, uh, if we have that kind of thinking, sometimes we have to repent of that. We have to, we have to be contented with the life that God is giving us. Now, now God has, uh, we are also God's people. God has freed us from slavery just like uh, He has done to Israel. And sometimes we even want to go back to slavery. But at the same time, one more, uh, one more similarity I see here. Just as God has promised Canaan to Israel, God has promised us heaven. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, him in, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be ever with the Lord. This is the promise of God. Just like He promised Israel, I'm going to give you a land of your own someday, a land flowing with, with milk and honey. God has promised us a, a, a place someday na hindi pa po na kikita ng mata, hindi pa po naririnig ng mga tenga. That is God's promise for us. John 14, 1-3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Just as soon as God has freed us from that bondage of sin, God has also promised us that someday we will be with Him in heaven. Isa rin po yung pangako ng Panginoon sa atin. And though we, don't, we haven't realized it now because wala pa tayo doon and I don't think anyone is in a hurry to be there, but that is something that we can hold on to. That, that, that these things in this life, kaya, you know, if we just focus on that promise, we can be like Paul. When he, say, when he said that after describing shipwreck, after describing all of the difficult things na nangyari sa buhay niya, ano mo yung sinabi niya? For our, my light affliction. How was he able to describe all of those things, almost dying, and things that we will never uh, wish na, na sa iba tao? How can he describe these things as light affliction? Why? Because his focus is in the promise that God has given him. Compared to that, it's light affliction. Compared to that, it's nothing. Why? Sabihin na natin, worst comes to worst, you suffer all your life. 
from, from the moment you got saved, let's say your 20s, until the moment you die, 60s or 70s, lahat na lang ng pinarala sa inang Panginoon ay suffering. Like, let, let's just put that, worst comes to worst. You know, God said, even that life is but a vapor. Even that life, it's here now, it's gone. Bible said, Kaya ka, even if you suffer for 40, 50 years, all the things that you have, uh, you experience are suffering and tribulation, it's still nothing to be compared to eternity. Kaya nga sabi, sabi ni Paul, light. Walang kwenta. Kahit na, even worse comes to worse, patayin na nila ako. So what? They're just promoting me to heaven. They're just promoting me to the place that my God has promised me to bring me someday. And, and, and pagdating doon, yung, yung pag-torture nila sa akin, hindi ko naramdam yun. Yung, yung ginagawa nila sa akin, hindi ko naramdam All I can feel is the joy of being with the Lord forever. That's why, you know, if you lose track of that promise, that's when we lose hope. If we lose track of that promise, that's when, we, uh, that's when we get discouraged. Why? Because the reason why God gave us that, that promise in the Word of God, His purpose is for us to look forward to it. Para po encourage tayo. So these people, Israel, God has promised to them Canaan. But you know, a lot of them, especially the first generation that went out of Egypt, they were too weak to claim that promise. But, but instead, this generation that Joshua is leading, they are there ready to claim that promise. And, and just... As God as well, another similarity I see, just as God has led Israel through Moses, led Israel through the pillar of cloud, pillar of fire, and now through Joshua, God is also leading us to ating buhay. God has been leading us all along the way. Since the moment you got saved, since the moment you repented and placed your faith in, 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 in God, God has given you guidelines after guidelines and instructions after instructions on what to do. Minsan lang po, just like Israel, hindi po tayo sumusunod. Minsan lang po, just like Israel, we don't want to obey God. You know, ano po yung guideline na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon living this life? The Word of God. Very simple, ang Bible. The, 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 the way by which God leads us today is the Word of God. This is what Moses is sa Israel. This is what the pillar of clouds is sa kanila. This is what the pillar of fire is sa kanila. This is what Joshua is sa kanila. The word of God sa atin ngayon. Everything, all of those things into one, which is the Bible. The Bible says in uh, Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a what? A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, without which we won't know which step to take. Without which, kaya nga, that's why it is my burden, it is my, it is my uh, 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 desire really to always, Lord, help me to be in your word every single day. Bakit? How dare we try to live life without consulting the word of God? How dare we try to, to pass by a day without really thinking and meditating upon the instructions that God has given us? Para bang ang yabang naman natin, well, don't need your instructions, Lord, I know what to do. That, that whenever we don't consult the word of God, Yan yun mangyayari sa atin. That's why, remember, chapter 1, sabi niya kay Joshua, Joshua, make sure that you meditate upon this day and night. This will be your guide. And as this guides you, you guide uh, the, the people of God as well. Put this in their mind. Put this in their heart. Let them meditate upon that. That's the only way you're going to know what to do. That's the only way you're going to know how, uh, which, way, which way to take. The, the, the Word of God is our guide all along the way. Lagi po. And that's why sometimes when we get lost, sometimes when we fall, it's when, remember, it's, it's always when we go away from the Word of God. Yun lang. Pagka nagkamali ka, nagkasala ka, nag, uh, uh, you, you, you trip along the way, and you realize it, alam mo, maalala mo, narinig ko na sa preaching yan, di ko sinunod. Nabasa ko na sa Bible yan, di ko naman sinunod. Next time, I'm going to obey the Word of God, fall again, wala, hindi ko kasi sinunod. You know, hindi po nagkulang ang Panginoon sa paalala sa atin. Hindi po nagkulang ang Panginoon sa pag-guide sa atin. Alam po ang kulang, yung pagsunod po natin. Yung pagsunod lang po natin. We can never, that's why uh, I also made that point in, in my devotion that whenever we fall, whenever we fall into temptation and sin, we, the one person we can never blame is God. Never. Kaya nga sabi, sabi ni James sa, uh, sa, mga, sa mga sinulatan niya, huwag naman kayong mga mangmang, ang Diyos pa sisisihin nyo. Di ba? Ang, 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 minsan yung iba sa atin sinisisi pa natin yung kaaway no the Bible, the Bible is very clear whenever we fall into sin whenever we we commit mistakes it's because of our own lust and we follow that that's it wala na po tayong dapat ibang sisihin but uh, uh, but if we just continue following the word of God then we're going to uh, uh, take the right steps along the way dun lang po tayo magkakaroon ng confidence in the decisions that we make 
You know, the reason why we, we are reluctant in making a decision is because we know we're not, our relationship is not okay with God. Because we know that we don't know the Word of God. Because we know that we're not consulting the Word of God. That's why we're reluctant in making decisions. But if we are being led by the Word of God, confident lagi tayong gumawa ng decision. Why? Because we have been obeying the Word of God. And we need the Word of God because just like Israel, and even today tayo, there are so many battles ahead of us. You know, that is a fact of the Christian life. It's a fact. It's just like something that the Lord has already decreed. Para ba sinabi, tatuhin na po natin yung problema na dinisign talaga ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. The reason why nagagalit tayo pag may problema is hindi natin matanggap. But if tanggap na natin na sinabi ng Panginoon, magkakaproblema ka, wala lang surprise. Hindi na, hindi na tayo, hindi na ganun katindi yung, yung bagok. Why? The Bible says in uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, 4, verse 12 to 13, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also uh, with exceeding joy. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 3, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Sabi ni Peter, think it not strange. Sabi ni James, when ye fall. That means both of those verses says that you are sure to experience battles ahead. Kaya nga po, pag nagtaka ka pa, hindi ka kasi nagbabasa ng Bible. Pag nagtaka ka pa, hindi ka kasi nagme-meditate sa Word of God. Pag nagtaka ka pa, that means you're not really putting it in your heart. The Bible, hindi po nagkulang ang Bible to remind us that we are going to suffer. To remind us that we are going to face battles. Eh, so just like Israel, that will happen to us. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 says, For this cause... Paul knowing that there are so many battles ahead because of these early churches. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Because there is battle. Paul realized, kaya ang prayer niya sa mga tao sa, sa, sa Colossians is, sa Colossians, sa mga tao sa Colossians is to be filled with the knowledge of His will, to know the will of God, to have wisdom and to have spiritual understanding. Why? Because these are the things that we need whenever we face battle. Una, know the will of God. If you don't know the will of God, mahirap ka magdesisyon pag merong problema. Why? Because you don't know which direction you're taking in the first place. Right? Second, have the wisdom of God. Why do you need the wisdom of God? So to see battles or, or, or problems in the way God sees it. And why do you need to have spiritual understanding? To have that, know, uh, that knowledge, how to apply the things that you know in that particular situation. Kaya nga po, if you think that you can live the, your life without the Word of God, then you're mistaken. If you think that you can spend a day skipping to read the Word of God, you're, then you're mistaken. If you think that you, 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 uh, you don't need to pray, you don't need the Word of God para mabuhay sa mundo na ito, just like whenever Israel is not consulting God, then you are terribly mistaken. Let's not, let's not underestimate our enemy and let's always focus on the Word of God. But going back to our message, God has, just like Israel, God has already given us the victory. God has already given us the way. Just because, uh, meron din tayong battles, there are battles along the way, but just like Israel, just like what God told Joshua, I have given you this place, God has also given us the victory. First of all, Christ is already victorious. Una po ang ating pinaglilungkaran na Panginoon, siya po yung nagwagi na. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 to 10, the Bible says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, Paul is saying, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath what? Abolished death, hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Our Savior is already victorious. Kaya po, bakiklaim natin ang victory. Why? Because Christ is already victorious. And Christ has already promised us victory. But the realization of that victory is not yet now. The realization of that ultimate victory is when we are together with the Lord in heaven. The Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Amen? But we shall all be changed. So only some of you should sleep, not all. 
Okay? So, uh, wag kayong lahat matulog. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So this is something that Paul is revealing to, to, the, uh, to the believers to encourage them. For this, in, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So that ultimate victory is when we are together with Christ. Verse number 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are already victorious. Kaya ka po, naman yung hinaharap natin, always think about that. God has already promised us the victory. But again, meron pa rin po tayo mga battles na matatalo. And, and, and we're not always victorious here on earth, but ultimately we'll be victorious in heaven. Now because we have been promised a victory, verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren. When, when you read that word therefore in the Bible, always find out what it's, what it's there for. Now, Paul said for 51 to 57, Binigay na ang victory ng Panginoon. God has already given you the victory. Now because of this, be ye steadfast. Be ye unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Because you know that you're already victorious, ganito naman ang gawin nyo. Don't live your life in disobedience. Don't live your life in mediocrity when it comes to serving God. Don't live your life, uh, your Christian life, uh, na parang, para bang hindi namumuhay ka ng walang pagpapasalamat sa victory na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. That's why whenever we fail God, lalong kung narealize natin that God has already purchased victory for us, mas lalong matindi yung dagok dapat sa atin. Why? Because we are people who are already given all of these things by God, and yet we still fail Him. And yet we still lives, uh, live lives that is uh, na para bang mga talunan. Kaya nga, when you lose your battle in giving, when you lose your battle in being faithful in church attendance, when you lose your battle in being faithful in prayer and Bible reading, then you're not really uh, realizing what God has already given you. So now, God is telling Joshua, I have given you the victory. Panalo ka na. God is also telling us today, I have given you the victory. Someday, no matter how hard it is right now, someday, there's that ultimate victory that you will be, with me, you will be together with me. So now, uh, as we go quickly through the message, what are we to do now that we have been promised the victory? My, my only point is really isa lang. Only one. Pero may mga sub-points. What are we to do now that we have been promised victory according to Joshua chapter 6? Because if we're going to look at all, we don't have enough time. But according to Joshua chapter 6, what are we to do because God has already given us the victory? Simply obey. Yun lang. Sumunod na kayo. Simply obey. Verse 3. Going back to our text. God said to Joshua, I have given you. Binigay ko na sa'yo, sabi niya sa verse 3, and ye shall compa- compass the city. Itong gagawin mo. All ye men of war, and go around this, about the city once. Thou shalt do six days. And the seventh priest shall be for thee. Uh, and, and eventually, until verse 5, sinabi ng Panginoon, you're going to go around once every, uh, uh, for six days. And the seventh day, you're going to go around seven times. And after that, uh, when, when, the, when you hear the trumpet, everyone will shout. And then the, the wall, the Bible says, the wall will fall flat. And you're going to attack and kill everyone inside. Except Rahab and, 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 and uh, her, her family. That's what God said. So, now that I have given you the victory, Joshua, obey what I'm going to say. And we have to obey no matter how ridiculous it may sound. Why? We've already been victorious. Para bang pag sinabi, babalik na naman tayo sa ganitong illustration eh. Para bang pag sinabi ni mama, pag uwi mo dyan, may naghihintay ng motor sa'yo doon. Ano, bayad na. Linisin mo yung CR. Hindi <laughs> mo ba lilinisin yung CR? Uh, linisin mo yung kotse na, hindi mo ba lilinisin? Ma, kahit anong gusto mong gawin ko, araw na to, gagawin ko. Sabihin mo lang may naghihintay ng motor doon. Yun ang sinasabi, yun sinasabi ng parang, I have already given you the victory. Joshua, this, this, uh, this, uh, this people inside this high walls, I have already given you, now do what I say. Yeah? Kaya nga po, sunod na lang po tayo. Binigyan lang po tayo ng victory, no matter how hard it is, sumunod ka na lang kapatid. Why? Napaka-unreasonable mo naman, binigyan na sa'yo yung motor, ayaw pa sumunod. Ay, motor. <laughs> victory, ayaw mo pa sumunod. Diba? Napaka-reasonable naman. Now, sometimes, or most of the time, the, 
the thing that we have to, to do, or the thing that God is uh, telling us to do, just like what he's telling Joshua, doesn't make sense at all. Doesn't make sense. I have heard preachings that tried to explain this away. And bahala, bahala kayo kung paano yung iintindihan yung ginagawa. Because, you know, people try to explain what God is doing by logic and by their own understanding. It's impossible. You know, I heard this one preaching na sabi, uh, when you go around six, uh, six days or seven days, lumalambot yung ano ba? Unti-unting natitibag. Kaya pag sigaw, talagang, talagang fall flat. Because six days you're going around, it's making the, the wall softer and softer. And the last day you go around seven times, it made the wall even more brittle. That's why when they shouted, everything just crumbled down. I don't know about you, but even if uh, uh, one million Mariah Carey's will shout at this or sing the high note at the same time, nothing will be broken there. The reason why these people have this kind of uh, 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 confidence in that wall, kahit na nakita na nila na napaka miraculous ng Panginoon, meron pa rin silang tumala sa wall na yun because that wall is really something that they have proven to be uh, effective. Uh, uh, so, let's not try to explain it away. But what I, want, uh, what I want to see is try to look at why God asked them to do this for seven days. And I think I have made this point before because God is still giving a chance. This is just a personal thing for me, for these people to repent. God's still giving. Why? Paano, paano ka naman nakasigurado? Sigurado ako because of the story of Rahab. Sigurado ako because of the story of Nineveh. Because God is still compassionate. He doesn't want to destroy these people. Now, God has, uh, of, I, I think more than 400 years ago, God has already told Abraham, I'm going to destroy these people. My judgment is upon them. They're wicked. Remember, these people are people who are sacrificing babies. They're, these people are people who are killing the innocent. Napaka-wicked nila sa harap ng Panginoon. But God has given them so much time to repent. And even the worst of them, Rahab, when she repented, God had mercy and compassion upon her and accepted her. Kaya nga, you know, six days, there are even preachings that told us na, oh, maybe tinatawanan na sila ng mga tao sa Jericho. Well, they're going around, ah, these crazy people. I don't think these people are laughing at them right now. Why? I think, in the first place, they're in there because they're afraid. Second point, they have seen all of the most improbable things happen because of uh, the God of Israel. They don't have the luxury to laugh right now. I'm sure that every day Israel is going to stand and march around. Kaba ang nararamdaman nila. Why? Because the judgment of God is here. They know that the judgment is God is upon them, and yet for six days, seven days, they did nothing. Nothing. Wala man lang ni sa kanila na sabi suko na ako hindi ko na kaya yung mental torture. Any day now these people are just this, the God of these people will destroy our walls and kill us all, and yet not one of them repented. You know, sometimes we, uh, you know, sometimes hindi lang po natin na-realize nandun na ang, ganun na ang estado ng ating puso. Every time you reject the Word of God, every time we reject the preaching of the Word of God, every time we say no to the will of God, our hearts are getting harder and harder and harder. And then you find ourselves uh, na hindi na tayo, that, that the Word of God is not uh, uh, doing anything in us anymore. That's why if you are here today and you're still not yet saved, and every Sunday you hear the gospel of Christ, every Sunday you hear repentance and faith, and you're still not repenting and placing your faith in Christ, you are just like these people, and one day God's judgment is on you now, and it will be too late by then. You know, when the walls came crumbling down, and the people of Israel attacked, it was too late for these people, even the ladies, even the kids. Patay. Lahat. And then these people say, oh, God is so cruel. Bakit pati naman yung mga babae? Bakit pati naman yung mga bata? Papatayin pa. You don't realize how much time God has given to these people. God has given them so much time to repent. And just like the, 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 uh, uh, the city of Nineveh, when God uh, was just ready to destroy them, God gave them one last chance in the form of Jonah, and they repented and God stayed His judgment. You know, hindi pa po huli ang lahat. Kung nakaupo ka pa dyan, naririnig mo pa ang salita ng Panginoon, tumatama pa sa puso mo, it's not too late to surrender to that. Whatever that is, it may be salvation, it may be uh, God's calling in your life, it may be something that you have to do for God, it's not too late. Pwede ka pa mag-surrender, kapatid. Pwede pa, hanggat hindi pa matigas yung puso mo. Every week na lang, naririnig po natin, uh, every, every, week, every time we hear the word of God, God is doing something in the heart, is, He's pricking our hearts, He's telling us to do something specifically. So, I don't know what that is, ikaw lang nakakalam yan. But as long as you say no and no and no to God, minsan magiging, kat- magiging katulad ka ng mga tao dito sa Jericho. 
the, the, the Bible says, if, I'm sure that even if, if just some of these people went outside and say, we surrender, God will not turn these people away. Why? Because he's not willing that any should perish, that, but all should come to repentance. That is our God. That's how gracious, that's how merciful he is. Jericho is not mocking Israel during this time. No, they don't have the luxury to mock anymore. Why? Wala na sila. There are people who realize that they have lost. Kahit naman sino hindi matatawa. Diba? Kasi they know that every time Israel stands, this might be our last day. One day, Dalawang araw, three days, four days, five days, six days, wala pa rin, seven days, sabi na pa rin, wala na talaga. Judgment, magsisimula na ang judgment sa inyo. You know, someday, when judgment comes, it will be too late for those who are not saved. But for those of us who are saved and still saying no to the will of God sa buhay natin, one day it's going to be too late to do that. And when we, when we get to heaven, uh, uh, hindi na po natin pwede sabihin, Panginoon, sige, tusundin ko na po yung kalooban nyo. Marealize mong wala tayong reward sa Panginoon sa langit. It's not too late. So, so this is what happens to them. So, uh, just focus on obeying. Focus on, uh, focus on disobedience. Uh, uh, um, verse number 6 to 9. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and could pass the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed before, on before the Lord and blew with a trumpet and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priest, the priest and then the armed men uh, that blew with a trumpet and the Sabi ni, ito yung kinukorek sa akin ni Jalil. Paano po bang basahin to? Oh. Oh yeah, so reward. Came after the ark. Reward, yun ngayon ko lang na gets. Came after the ark and the priest going on and blowing with the trumpet. So, look at that. So, it starts with Joshua receiving the, uh, uh, the, um, the command of God and Joshua telling what the priest kayo mo una and after that the people who have weapons kayo susunod and then the rest of the people now what, uh, one point I want to make here there's certainly a lot of uh, uh, types with this uh, ram's horns and everything we're not going to go to that but uh, the principle I want us to see is those who have been given more by God has more onus to obey starts with Joshua Starts with Joshua. Kay Joshua, be, uh, the, the, the commands is, give, is being given to Joshua. If Joshua, upon realizing how ridiculous it sounds, says, No, Lord, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tell the people that. Tapos na doon. These people are going, to, uh, are going to realize the judgment of God to them instead of Jericho. But, uh, but because Joshua is, is uh, uh, obedient, Joshua relayed the message to what? The priest. The leaders and then those people who have weapons that are that are armed but if these leaders and priests will complain oh what, what do you mean Joshua we're just going to march around we're already here people are already afraid it's a great time to fight right now but if they complain I'm sure the people will follow you know we cannot uh, deny it but us who have been given more by God more responsibilities by God is more accountable to the Word of God po. Uh, don't get me wrong, all of us should obey the word of God. But God will judge us more strictly, those who are preaching, those who are teaching, those who are leading uh, in leader, a spiritual leadership position. You are going to be judged more by God. You have more onus to obey. You have to obey even more than these people. Why? Because some of these people may not obey because of your disobedience. Diba? Hindi, hindi ka nila pwede sisihin, of course. Kasi sa Panginoon, personal yung judgment nila. But God will judge you sa, gina, sa, sa, sa ginawa mo at sa, pag, uh, sa uh, uh, at result ng ginawa mo ay pagiging discouraged ng mga tao. Why? Because God is giving you the responsibility. Kaya ano sabi, ng, uh, kaya ano sabi ng, ni James? Be not many masters, knowing that we will receive what? Greater uh, condemnation. Why? Because we're going to be uh, judged more strictly by God. We're going to be judged more strictly not only by God, but by people as well. Kaya nga po, madalas natin naririnig, pastor ka pa naman, leader ka pa naman, preacher ka pa naman, anak ka pa naman, pastor. Why? It is just a basic fact that when you're placed in that position, people are judging you more strictly. It's just a basic fact that when you're given more responsibility by God, you're, being, you're, you're more accountable to God. Kaya nga po tayo na mga nagpipreach, tayo na mga na, na binigyan ng Panginoon na leadership position, much more, so much the more, sabi nga ni, uh, ni, ni, ni Paul, so much the more na lalo tayong dapat Sumunod. 
Kung itong mga li- if these leaders will complain, then everyone else will complain. Right? If, 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 if the Bible student is not obeying, the other homeboys will not obey. Basic fact. And if my father is not obeying the will of God, there's less chance that I will obey. That I will, that I will obey the will of God. If the pastor is, if the pastor is leading the flock astray, uh, there's a, a big chance na nakonti lang sa mga members sa sumusunod sa kaloban ng Panginoon. That's why uh, these people, sino una? Priests. And then those who have weapons. And then susunod ang iba. You know, it's easier for members to obey when they see the leaders are, themselves are obeying. Despite how difficult it is. Paano kung sinabi ni Joshua, Sabi ng Panginoon, mag-march daw tayo. Eh, sunod na lang tayo. Kung ganun yung attitude ni Joshua, hindi rin magkakaroon ng ganung klaseng enthusiasm, en- enthusiasm, enthusiasm na sumunod yung mga tao. That's why it starts with the leader. It's, and then with the people who, are, have been, who have been given position, and then the rest will follow. Not only that, we, uh, we have to obey, even though it sounds ridiculous sometimes, not only that, uh, the the... the Leaders have more onus to obey, but we must obey, and most of the time we forget this, in every little detail. Obey everything. You know, incomplete obedience is still disobedience. You look at the, 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 the details that God has given them. In verse 10, sabi ni Joshua, uh, part of that is don't make any noise. Tahimik. Those are the little details. Another one is don't take anything from that place. And another little detail in verse 19 is that the silver and gold and the brass and all these things are reserved for God. You know, if these people just obeyed the, the going around but disobeyed in everything else, I'm sure there's going to be punishment. We know that but with the story of uh, Achan. Achan ba, tama? Why? Because he obeyed in marching around, he's part of that, but took the silver and gold. That's why nagkaroon siya ng punishment. That's why as, as believers, wag po natin kalimutan that we are, yes, we are, we, are obe- we are to obey that general will of God, yung na, na, na command sa lahat, but also obey in every specific details na, bin, na sinasabi ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. In every detail. Whatever detail that is, may that be in giving. Yes, yes Lord, I'm going to uh, uh, attend the church every Sunday, but I'm not going to give. Still disobedience. Still, yes, Lord, I'm going to give, but I'm going to give only a little. Still disobedience. Yeah, sumun nagbigay ka na rin lang mali pa. Sana hindi ka na nagbigay, right? Uh, yes, Lord, I'm going to uh, read your Bible, but only every Saturday. Still disobedience. Because sabi na pano day and night, di ba? Yes, Lord, I'm going to. Uh, I realize that this child that you have given me is uh, uh, is yours, and you have just entrusted them to me. But I will not discipline them the way you want me to discipline. Still disobedience. Yeah. What we don't realize is we, we, we try to mask our disobedience sa pagsunod natin sa malalaking bagay. Yung mga nakikita ng tao. nag naman ako, pero umaga lang. nag naman ako, late ka naman. You think you really fully obeyed God if you come every Sunday and you're late? No, you didn't. And, and if you might have a problem with me saying that, but take it up to the Lord, not to me. Because that is the Word of God. You, you know, sometimes it's hard to believe that when we are late sa, sa trabaho, ngayon na, na medyo matagal-tagal na rin po ako naging principal, may mga tao po na pag na-late, ay, sorry po, sorry po, sama sa pakiramdam na na-late ako sa trabaho. Pero pag na-late ka sa church, pasok, ganun ka pa. Kaya ano naman? Ah, titingin-tingin mo. Di ba dapat mas mahiya tayo na na-late tayo sa service kaysa sa trabaho? Di ba? Di ba dapat mas mahiya tayo na na hindi tayo nagbibigay ng ng, ng tama sa gawain kaysa gastos tayo ng gastos sa ibang bagay? Dapat mas tayo tayo. Why? Because we claim to be children of God. We claim to be people that God has given victory. Uh, we, we, we submit to the pastor and yet we don't want to submit to your husband. Still disobedience. Right? I submit ako sa husband ko except on this part of my life. Still disobedience po. I want, we, we all want to submit to God. We all want to, to, to say that, Lord, I'm obeying you, pero Panginoon, kahit ito lang part ng buhay ko, wag mo nang pakilaman. Ito lang, kahit ito lang, Panginoon, paubaya mo na sa akin. Kapatid, it's still disobedience. That's why, in every little detail, let us obey. In every little thing that God, God is telling us, sundin po natin, susunod ka na rin lang, completely obey the Lord. Right? Because if these people, this, if these people only chose what I want to obey, lalo na yung chismosa, mahirapan to na hindi magsalita. Eh, we don't know how long it took 
to go, uh, go around. Kung ikaw na chismosa, <laughs> alam mo ba si ano? Hindi ano, ano? <laughs> mo pipigilan. Pero sabi ni Joshua, shh, tayimik. You have to obey that. Di ba? Mahirap. Lalo na mga tao hindi makapigilan yung pagsasalita. Di po ba? You have to obey in everything. Lalo na pagpasok mo, ang ganda ng mga gamit. When the wall fell down, ganda ng mga gamit. Sayang kung masusunog. You just gonna burn this? Oh Lord, you're being impractical, Lord. I will not burn that. I can eat that. I will not burn this, per- this woman. She's beautiful. She can be my wife. I'll convert her. Well, you have to obey in every little detail. So when, when that wall fell down, God said, burn everything. And I, but those things, you, you give it to me. It's for my house. Akin niya, sabi ng Panginoon. Pero Panginoon, balato naman, 10% lang sa akin. No. In every little thing, in your, the use of your time, the use of your resources, even your strength, the Lord said, obey me in all of those things. Kaya nga, what are those things that we still cannot surrender to the Lord? Is it the music you list, we listen to? Is it the, the movies we watch? Is it the books we read? Uh, uh, what, whatever that is, kapatid, once if you're still not obeying the Lord in those small details, you're going to have a hard time obeying the Lord in the larger ones. Or, you're trying to obey the Lord in the larger ones, but it's just a, it's just a, a show. Why? Because we can't obey the Lord in those little details. So, so, Josh, so God said to Joshua, I've given you this battle. Panalo na kayo. Just obey me in all of these things. I'm going to tell you what to do. So God said, I saved you. I've given you the victory. Now obey me. Ito ang mga gagawin mo sa buhay mo. While you're still alive, do this, do this, do this, do that. Kung di tayo sumusunod, we're very unreasonable. Napaka-unreasonable natin. And only then, when we try to obey the Lord in every little thing, can, God, can we be truly be used by God mightily. Just be, now because Joshua obeyed in everything, the verse 27 says, So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. This will never happen if Joshua was not willing to completely, fully, wholly obey the Lord. If you've been reading the book uh, from Gen- uh, 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 the books before this, you will see that the description of the Lord for Joshua and Caleb because they what? Holy obeyed the Lord. Hindi not, not, not simply obeyed. What did they do? They holy obeyed the Lord. Kaya sila lang yung nakapasok. Why? Because they holy obeyed the Lord. And when we obey the Lord, that's what God expects. You holy obey me. Lahat po, hindi huli. Huli akong susunod, pero holy. Uh, buo. Only then, pag nag-decide tayo na, Lord, I'm going to obey in everything, can we be truly be used of God mightily. So, uh, uh, just a challenge for you this afternoon. We are victorious people. People who have been promised victory. God is victorious, but because of Christ's victory, we have been promised victory. Now we have to courageously obey Him, obey Him in everything. Kapatid, even if it, if it causes you to suffer for the rest of your life, it is but uh, nothing compared to the victory that God has promised us in heaven with Him someday. Let us go. Let us all stand and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, this.